Hello Floss Tube. this is Michelle. Um, today is Monday the 20th of November and it's dark outside um, and so I've got some make-do lighting set up here and I think I look a little strange but I think that the stitching looks pretty good and that's what you came here to look at. So this is my eighth podcast. I can't get it straight. I can't get the but I, I shouldn't mess with it, especially after what happened last time. And speaking of last time, I do have um, this book um, to share with you. It's right under here, um, under my clipboard. I will probably lose it um, and think I don't have it by the end of the podcast. But um, This is my eighth podcast, which is not very many um, since I started in March. But I... Um, I didn't stitch any in September. We went to Harry Potter World in Orlando at the end of um, August. And I brought some stitching. I brought a lot of monochrome. I have a lot of red stitching. I brought a lot of monochrome, monochrome red stitching and I didn't get to it, I just knit. And then all through September I knit. Um, October I stitched a lot. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you can see that I have been stitching. Um, my Instagram is private. Um, it wasn't private, and then it was private. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm not a teenage girl, um, so I don't really know why it should be private, but it's private right now. I get, I get friend requests, and if I can see that you cross-stitch, um, then I, you know, I just accept it. Um, right away if you cross stitch or homeschool or if there's some reason that you know that I can tell why you're asking um, to see me I uh, uh, to, to friend me I don't tend to friend um, businesses um, and if I can't tell by your profile picture or your name or the other people you follow or the people that follow you I can't tell those two apart on on Instagram um, then sometimes I wait um, so if if you're somebody that has um, asked to be my friend on Instagram are you friends on Instagram or are you I don't know whatever it is and you haven't I haven't said yes then just send me a private message and say I'm, I'm real I'm a cross stitcher um, I don't know why anybody else would want to follow me um, I show cross stitching and knitting and crocheting, occasionally the garden. Um, I show you everything I eat. <laughs> um, occasionally I, I have kid pictures in there, um, but uh, I don't, nobody would want to follow me for any bad reason. So um, maybe I shouldn't be private, but it is private right now. Um, so I wanted to show you, I don't have any finishes. Um, like I said, I cross stitched in October and every time I, I said, well, I'm going to make a podcast, hordes of teenagers descended on my house and needed, uh, tacos and brownies and snickerdoodles. I think one weekend we went through four batches of snickerdoodles and there actually weren't that many teenagers here, but, um, they just keep showing up at my house. So... I'm either going to have to manage my time better or get better locks on the doors. I don't know. So I wanted to show you some things that I had stitched in the past. Um, some things, there's been a lot of things I wanted to show you because when I'm watching podcasts and somebody mentions something, I think, oh, well, I want to show you such and such. Um, I started this video a while ago and I realized that you could see the reflection of the school table in this frame. Um, which isn't really fair to the beautiful cross stitch and also I don't really want you to see what my school table looks like in real life. I only want you to see how my school table looks like in my beautiful pictures on Instagram. Um, things are me crazy. This is Renaissance Garden by The Good Huswife. I guess it's Huswife. So it's out of print. Um, I thought about it when Schoolhouse Stitcher showed it and um, ruined it for me, basically. 
so this is, ha ha, maybe I can put it down here. This is Renaissance Garden. It's beautiful if you like browns and blues and greens. If you like um, that Jacobean, a traditional Jacobean um, floral scene. I love hills. You know I love hills. Jessica at Schoolhouse Stitcher. Um, I can never look at this little bunny before. I mean, again, um, I thought it was just a cute little bunny, a little stylized bunny. Um, Jessica thinks he's pooping. So uh, I'll leave that up to you. This is stitched with one thread of DMC, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, which just leads me back to the only color that doesn't look right over one is red, which is my favorite color to stitch with. So I hope if you like that, you have um, good hunting on uh, eBay or... Uh, What's the other one? Stash unload. Now, I taught you from time to time with um, my closet. My closet. I don't have a lot of clothes. Um, I don't. I make a lot of decisions during the day. And what am I going to wear is not how I want to spend my decision making power. So um, I think I counted. I had like 12 shirts that were in this same family of colors a couple of years ago and I realized I, I probably do need to make slightly more decisions than to wear one of my 12 teal shirts every day but um, so in my closet um, I have cross stitch projects um, finished hanging up on hangers um, you know these hangers right here or I have um, almost finished ones hanging up on hangers and people have said on Instagram, oh, show us everything that's in there. And that kind of gives me a panic attack. Um, I do take anxiety pills, but um, I would really have to pump up my dosage before I could admit to what's actually in that closet. I am. Um, but I did pull out a couple of things for you before my chest got tight. This is one of my favorites. This is Elizabethan Garden. I think it's Elizabethan, not Elizabeth's, but Elizabethan Garden by Bright Needle. And I am so sad that Bright Needle no longer designs and that a lot of their charts are hard to find. Um, I just, I love, so you've got these traditional Elizabethan motifs, a peas pod, a peas cod, or a thistle, this bug right here, very traditional looking, those big blocky blocks of color. Um, I, I don't know if that's a pomegranate. But then you've got them, but they're pastel. Isn't that funny? Isn't that odd? You know, Eliz uh, Elizabethan colors are not typically pastel. Um, this looks for all the world like 32 count fabric. Um, there was a time I stitched on 35 or 36, but this just looks for all the world like 32 count fabric, but it's only stitched with one thread. And it's stitched with one thread of anchor, which a lot of Bright Needles designs called for anchor. And I got to thinking about this when I was watching Kitten Stitcher. I'm so glad you're making videos. Um, when she was set talking about anchor thread in either her last or her next to last, podcast and she was saying that anchor was a thicker thread and that that's why a lot of people um, try to use anchor black instead of black and the coverage with one thread on this which I could swear is 32 count is great and so I've seen a couple of places on Etsy that sell lots of um, sorry I keep leaning over here that sell lots of anchor threads and so I th you know it's a pretty good price and I thought about doing that but let me know in the comments if you have a good source for anchor threads because hearing Teresa speak about them and then looking at that right there where one over one coverage on 32 count is great um, made me really interested in anchor threads again um, I'm off 32 count though at the moment I can't stand it I just I hate 32 count right now um, this happens from time to time 
The other older finish, which is not a finish because I have one bird, one bird left to do. Um, I put the date on here, 2010, and it's rice stitched. It's not coming out. Um, but for seven years, okay, and the little centers of the flowers all need one yellow stitch each, and then I need to finish this blue bird over one. And in seven years, I just haven't been able to bring myself to do that. All right. Um, this was in the Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly magazine. Um, I remember just absolutely loving it. So it probably came out, if not in 2010, probably 2009 or 2008. This is a Tennessee sampler. And um, I'll try to link, try to remember to link my Pinterest Tennessee sampler board that's on Pinterest. Tennessee samplers are very distinct. Um, and this is a good, a good example. Um, they usually have a rose red, some green, sometimes really crazy bright lime green, um, a similar motif, this house. And I really, really like, I really like them all. I would like to have some more. I'd like, I'd love to do a whole collection of Tennessee samplers, but seeing as how in seven years I haven't been able to finish, um, that blue bird right there. Um, and this has a verse on it. The, um, the alphabet is four sided stitch. It has a verse in um, a faithful friend I highly prize, but mere pretense I do despise. And despise is, uh, that's not how you spell despise, but. Oops. So if you have a, if you have some old sampler and antique needlework quarterlies lying around or if you got the DVDs I think there are two DVDs or at least there were when I bought it a couple of years ago um, that's a really nice one um, except for that little bird I can't deal with the bird obviously right now okay so I have some new starts um, that I've started since I met you last or since I saw you last. The first one that I started, I think, um, is an old one. This is the second, um, video, uh, video, the second, uh, cross stitch pattern that I hunted down on eBay many years ago. And it's Cricut Collection. And it's really unlike most of their designs. There's no little bunny or Hershey's Kiss or anything. I like, it's these stylized flowers. And I like, um, I like how you see the soil line is this stylized motif. Um, and there's checkers and different, obvious, I mean, that of course is a checkered flower, but um, there's little um, patterns in the petals that I think are really nice. I am not sure what is going on here with that mat. Whew. Um, but I just absolutely love this. It's called The Promise Kept. And it's number 51. And so I'm off 32 count fabric right now. So I stitched it on, um, or I am stitching it on uh, platinum, 40 count platinum. I never start in the middle. I always, I hear people talk about where they start. I always start start in the top left hand corner but on this design that didn't make any sense um, so I'm starting I marked I marked a little um, stitch where my middle was and then I started um, on the daffodil um, it's charted for DMC I'm using DMC I'm not crazy about that green I hope it Um, and I think I'm using a darker yellow. Um, I think it called for, yes, yeah, 676 was the dark yellow and 677 was the light yellow. Um, 677 is just too yellow, I mean too light. It's barely yellow. So I'm using 677, 676 for the light yellow. 
Man, oh my goodness, I hope I wrote down somewhere what I'm using for the dark. It may be 729. I'm not sure. I looked it up on a, a color chart to see what the next one in the family would be. So that's my start on the Promise Kept. And that's platinum. Uh, platinum 40 count with um, whew, the lighting. It's like comic book. You are not going out right now. He had a bath yesterday and he just wants to go and roll in. Funk is what he wants to roll in. Um, I started belatedly the Lantern Lane Sal with Chelsea and Priscilla. Priscilla and Chelsea. And this was uh, 40 count platinum and I dyed it just a little bit with tan writ. Um, just enough so that the white would show. And I'm using the Belle Swa Sister Scarlet and then maybe that's Weathered Vine. I sent my Weathered Vine back to 123 Stitch the first time because it was just a solid color. I mean it had not been um, I, I get really really annoyed when you pay for a variegated floss especially a variegated silk floss and it's one solid color. It was never dipped in any of the other colors. Uh, so I sent the Weathered Vine, and that was fine. They were fine with that. They sent me back this one, which is very variegated. A Sister Scarlet, it's variegated. I'd like it to be a little more variegated, but you can see it's variegated. It's fine. It's very pretty, and I'm not pulling any of that out. For the brown, I um, those were the only two silks I used. I'm using... I didn't bring my bag. I think I'm using Caterpillar. I don't know if it's Crescent Colors or Weeks. I'm using Caterpillar for the roof. Um, uh, 3865 um, for the white. And then the Fawn, which I'm not crazy about. The Fawn. Where is the Fawn? I think I used a little bit of the Fawn. You can see it there. That little pale yellow. Blech. I could have just used 677 for that. And I'm using the uh, peanut butter brittle. And then I'm using Onyx there. Onyx wasn't in the called for conversion. I think I bought Onyx for something else and just decided to use it. So that's fine. But my white shows up and that's that's what I was uh, wanted. I'm not enjoying these leaves. I don't know. So I've been putting those off. But... Um, but I would like to finish this this year. I really do. I really do think it's pretty. And I'm so jealous of Michelle Farm Girl Stitcher and Kindred Stitcher. Their baby, it's cold outside. I would really like to do that in January, I think. Um, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So, those are my... Well, I did a restart. Let's see. I had started a couple of months ago... Um, I said I was going to do it forever, and then I started um, Earthly Treasures, and it actually came up in my rotation, which is out the window until the new year, because I want to do Christmas stuff. Um, I was stitching it on 32 count, the expensive fabric that it called for, Vintage Pearled Barley. No, I didn't do 36 count, though. I did 32 count vintage pearl barley. And I couldn't stand it. It was loose. My stitches looked messy. I'm not in the mood to stitch with two threads. So, But I had stitched almost the whole angel at the top. Um, so I kind of want to finish that. And then just cut it out and maybe just use it as an ornament all year round. I mean, it could be any. It could be a Christmas ornament. It could be a Halloween ornament. I think I could just leave that out year-round so that it won't go to waste because I did stitch about the whole thing. But it actually came up, so I was going to be stitching this on Halloween and then the 1st, which is All Souls, all Saints Day, and then the 2nd of November, which is All Souls Day. So I thought this was the perfect thing to stitch then. Um, so I restarted it on a piece of platinum that I dyed. I mean, it's barely darker. I've got to get a little braver. It's barely darker than platinum um, with tan writ. Um, and I'm so much happier 
the coverage is fine for me. Um, it's just it's just so much more pleasant for me right now to use one thread. I'm just, I don't know. But then I was stitching, um, I stitched a ton on the Heart Lives Where It Loves, which is going to be huge, and it's on 32 count. And the stitches looked fine. So I don't know if it's just my mood or um, if it's the particular skein of thread that I'm using or the combination of the thread and the fabric, but... I really love this, and this was one of the ones that I was hoping to get finished by the end of the year, but I'm not going to rush it. I mean, there's no point in trying to, to rush for a finish just so that I can put 2017 on it. I mean, I've got that one with 2010 on it, and the blue bird is not done. Um, then I wanted to do a few ornaments. Um, I'm not good. I don't stitch everybody in my family a Christmas ornament every year. Um, I don't even finish my ornaments. I, uh, I put them in a bin. And I may show you some of those next time. Um, but I am going to finish some ornaments this week. I bought mat board. And I've got my fabric. And I'm going to finish this. This was in the 2015 um, Just Cross Stitch. Um, it's a design by The Little Stitcher, and I think it's adorable. I changed up the colors. I talked on Instagram about what I did. I dyed this with Rit, um, and it's, it's, it's okay. It's, you can see the white, but I could have I gone darker with this. I should have re-dyed it after it dried, and I saw that it wasn't very dark, but I was impatient. I just wanted to start it. Um, I used mostly DMC. I think this is 938 or 939 for the dark brown that's um, up at the top and her hair and the bottom of the mailbox. The red is PRO34 from Silks for You in Australia. The lamp post, and I made it her boots, and then the opening of the mailbox are 3371. And then for her coat, and the words, I used 840. And in my Floss Away bag, I have some old 840 and some newer 840. And I used the older 840 because it had a pinkish tone to it that I much, much prefer. Um, so there she is. I just think she is so, so cute. And I'd like to do a flat mounted ornament on this um, right there. Then, on that same piece of um, fabric, there's my needle, I'm doing another one from the 2015, let's see, I'll show you what it is. Um, should have already had this. 2015 was a really good one. There's a lot in here that really appear appeal to me so here is he this is by samplers not forgotten and i've seen this a million times and i've been wanting to stitch it and it never occurred to me until i was actually stitching it that i can't even tell what these letters are some of them like that is that an e really but um it's really pretty so i started it last night On another piece of 40 count because I'm never ever stitching on 32 count again until I need to finish some things um, uh, he's in onyx I'm using the PRO 34 again that's weathered vine again that's 840 again I'm just pulling the things that are close to me um, 3865 for the white just whatever I have at hand on hand I'm just pulling so I'd like to get some more work on him tonight and um, maybe have a finish. I'd like to do one more ornament. Um, I got out some Ziploc bags, some gallon size Ziploc bags, and I started making copies of ornaments that I want to do. I thought I'd like to have 12 Ziploc baggies with the pattern or a copy of the pattern, um, a piece of fabric, and at least some of the threads in it so that maybe next year I could actually do an ornament a month. 
if I had it all ready to go. But now that I've said I want to just do one more ornament to get through before Christmas because I really want to get Lantern Lane done, now I just can't find a single one that would suit me. Um, I pulled this out. This is from two, a Little House Needleworks chart pack from 2008. And I kind of like, I kind of think I'd like to do that. Um, uh, I mean, I want to do one that I've already, that I already have, actually have. But then I think that's, those are just weird empty spaces to me. I don't know if you could just make, maybe you could make more snowflakes. Maybe those are snowflakes. Maybe you could make more falling down in a random pattern. I don't know. But that may be the one I do. Um, but I want to do one that I could finish quickly and still have plenty of time for Lantern Lane. Um, so I said I don't do a Christmas... Hey, Ramsel. I don't do a Christmas ornament for my kids every year. Um, even though I've been watching Vaughn, I always does. And I always enjoy seeing them. And Kathleen's Trodden Trail, I've been watching her talk about her ornaments for her kids. I did start a project a couple of years ago, um, and I didn't bring the pattern down. This is a pattern bag that I made, a Vana bag, um, when I was making them a couple of years ago. And I actually love this color combination so much that I bought fabric to make a table runner, a winter um, table runner with I bought the fabric I didn't do anything with it but um, so there's the bird and the inside and then I had some lime greens and some reds and I thought that would make a nice winter uh, table runner I when I bought this I um, you know, I've been watching Chelsea and Priscilla, like everybody else. I've been watching them quilt. Um, and, of course, I went out and bought fabric to make a, um, a Christmas quilt, too. But I need a new blade on my rotary cutter before I can do anything. Um, but I like to watch Love Sock, Wool's, Wool's pa Love Sock Wool's podcast. It's a knitting podcast. And she... Love Sock Wool. Yeah. Love Sock Wool, and she introduced me to a book called, um, the ladies on Instagram is Quilting in the Rain, and she has a book, and it's called, it's a, it's a Quilt as You Go book, but her, maybe it's called Quilt as You Go, but her Instagram name is Quilting in the Rain, and you quilt your fabric directly onto squares of batting. And then you connect the squares of batting. So you only have to quilt um, your layers together. But your fancy quilting is done square by square. Um, and that's what I had. I just like to look at stacks of fabric, I think. Like I like to look at stacks of cross stitch patterns. Stacks of daffodil bulbs that need to be. Well, anyways, in this bag... Um, now, I bought this pattern. It's a Prairie Schooler pattern. It's one of the 12 days of Christmas patterns. It's not the Santa. It's, um, it's people and things. I had bought it used several years ago when it was really hard to find, but I'm pretty sure it's on 123 Stitch. So, my idea was to make, um, two sets. So, here's eight maids of milking. How do you like the look? Utter on her, Michelle, farm girl stitcher. I don't know. Is that a good utter or not? It's kind of a brownie pink color. Um, so my idea was to make two sets. I think I have six of the 24 done. Maybe not that many. Two sets. One, the people would have brunette hair, and that would be Mary Margaret's. And in the other set, um, the people would have blonde hair, and that would be for Isabella. So Isabella, there's the nine dancing girls. This one has blonde hair. The drummer has blonde hair. Those would be Isabella's set. Um, Mary Margaret's set would all have brown hair. There's Lords of Leaping. And I think what I was going to do is I was going to flip the colors. 
So for Isabella's, he would be wearing blue pants and have a green tunic and a green hat. Um, and then Bella's girl flipped the blues and the greens. Um, and then of course there's, oh yeah, I have exactly six done out of 24. Um, and then there are the ones that, you know, don't have a person. Um, I wish I'd brought my pattern down. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's on one, two, three stitch now. I'm pretty sure it's available now in those terrible reprints. Terrible. Oh yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so you can see the color palette for these, and that's why I love it so much. The blue and the green, um, red. So if my kids ever get each get a set of those, um, they'll be doing good. And this is done on lamb's wool, 32 count lamb's wool, which is probably, uh, I really should do one of them this year. It must be just called 12 Days of Christmas, Prairie Schooler. So it's not the Santas. All right. What else was I going to show you? Uh, I'm not into this one either. I've showed you this bag before. Um, and they do have this fabric again at Joann's. I know Vonna had asked me last year um, where I'd gotten it, and it was gone. It's slightly metallic. I think the green is a tiny bit different this year, but they also have um, some other coordinating fabrics that go with it at Joann's. Did I say that? Uh, this is Loa Rose that I did on that gauzy white fabric, 32 count fabric. Actually, this 32 count is not bothering me. I don't know why. I'm surprised it's so gauzy. So I really, I did work. I thought, I told myself I was going to finish it before I finished Lantern Lane, which, I mean, I knew was a big fat lie, but, um, and so I really worked down here at the bottom a lot on this scroll of flowers, and then this is another big long scroll of flowers. So really, I've got to finish those two scrolls of flowers, finish the flowers that go around this circle and then go in and fill in the center yellow for a lot of um, a lot of these flowers need the center filled in but this is bright needle again uh, low how a rose air blooming from tender stem hath sprung Uh, Lo, how a rose air blooming from tender stem hath sprung. It came amid the cold of winter when half spent was the night. No, 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 no. From tender stem hath sprung a flower bright. Oh, I need to put the T on bright. It came amid the cold of winter when half spent was the night. So that's a German um, Christmas carol, Via Stein Rose, I think. Um sprungen or something um, I love the song I love singing it on Christmas Eve do you know what my horrible children ask their father if when he schedules the hymns at church on Christmas Eve they don't want to sing Silent Night they asked him if he could leave Silent Night off I don't know what's wrong with him. Don't know, don't know. But he better not leave Silent Night off. Okay, so what's in here? Oh. Um, so I was watching Mischievous Stitches, and she showed, was it Lucy, Lucy Calicut sampler? And something about the colors reminded me of something that I had seen before. So I went into my closet. And this is... I just have a copy. What does it say? I mean, I have the magazine and I have the DVDs, but in my book, I was just going to see if it um, said which edition. No. It's called the, Su the 1839 Susan Rambo Sampler. Um, 
And so I pulled it out and started working on it again. And I think what happened is I saw it and I really wanted to stitch that duck. And I stitched that duck and I was over it. Which is a shame because there's not that much more done. The other problem is um, I made, apparently I made some color changes. Didn't write them down. I took this one day to Joann's and stood over there at all the DMCs to try to figure out what this green was right here because I had changed it and hadn't written down. And the problem that I'm coming into right now is this red, which is all over the place, right? yeah, which is all over the place. I thought it was like four, is it 498 or something? I can't find a good match for it. So I don't know if I used something um, with a really wonky dye lot or you know if it because it's been like seven or eight years that's a squirrel by the way you wouldn't know um i really love that duck he was just fun something's missing in there there's like one square that's not done i keep forgetting where it is though the duck flowers i love these flowers um, I worked on that stem and on the the pot. Um, and then this is like a little green, uh, a green, you know. Makes me think of, you know, when you drew pic I drew pictures in elementary school, I always had like the straight stripe of green at the bottom and the straight stripe of, of blue at the, the top. But it's really, really pretty. And if I could just find that red just figure out what I used for that red. That's the problem. One of the problems with stopping and starting um, projects, um, especially if you're not good about writing down. Where are you going? Uh, would you please take your poochie dogs out for a wee? Thank you. Um, is well, dye lots change. Um, you might not have written down the changes you made. And also, changes in tension. I noticed that with my knitting, too, and I've only been knitting for two or three years. Projects that I, I started, and then I'm coming back to now, uh, my tension's different. Um, so that's a, a reason to, to finish your work. To finish your work. Okay, so the only new thing that I've gotten... Um, I got one chart, a Prairie Schooler, and this is a Prairie Schooler reprint. Um, I think when I ooh, when I redo my rotation in January, I'm going to keep a slot for um, Christmas and a slot for autumn. Um, but so I got this because I want to do this so I can be just like Farm Girl Stitcher. Um... And I've heard people complain about the reprint. And I mean, I thought at least it would be as nice as my printer paper that I use for homeschool. It's not. It's, it's really, really. Everything that everybody has said negative about that um, is for real. It's, it's quite disappointing. But I'm happy to have it. I am happy to have it, and I hope that they do the Christmas one that matches this and then the regular Village Green one that matches this. I hope they put those out soon because um, I would like to... Why didn't you go out, mister? Come here. Oh, you've never met my dogs. Come here. Come here to me. Come here to me. Oh, this is Hector. Oh, Ooh. the spotted weenie. That's what they called him at the pound. We got him um, in 2011, and his name is Hector. Um, I guess we were reading uh, the Iliad. And he said, Hector, can you stand on the table? I want you to see his bottom. Show him your, ooh. Make my dog fall off the table. Do you see his bottom? It's all speckledy. So we think he's a dachshund mix, a, jo a dachshund Jack Russell Terrier mix. He's saying, please, please get me away Ramsey's? from mommy. Yes, can you pick Ramsey's up without getting hurt? Ramsey's. Or hurting Ramsey's? Ramsey's we got, um, 
<laughs> we got Ramses. There's a festival. Um, this is Ram. There's a festival, a fall festival, at a town near us that we always go to. And they have the Humane Society's there. And so in 2011, we had gotten Hector. And um, last year, I had been looking on my Facebook page and had seen that it had been five years since we had gotten Hector. Five years to the day. So I was thinking about that as I walked by the Humane Society booth. And I saw this little face. And I said, oh, he looks like my Hector. He doesn't look much like Hector. He's a small black dog. That's where the resemblance ends. But I couldn't leave this little face. Hey, Ramsel. Is your brother down there laughing at you? Um, Ramses is friends with everybody. Um, he's friends with the cat. He's friends with Hector. He's friends with everybody he meets. Um, Hector's a grumpy old man. Hector is not a dog dog. He's a people dog. He doesn't like and Ramsey's very mouthy. So, now yeah, I've got dog hair everywhere. All right, so I think I have showed you all the stitching that I have to show you. So I'm going to do the book flip through. And then I will let you go. And I'll make my children taco salad. Okay, so this book um, is what I was gonna show you last time. This is Traditional Samplers by Brenda Keys. There's another edition with a different picture on it, but as far as I know, it's the same. It's the same one. May I help you? No, we're having taco salad. We're having taco salad. <clears throat> so in the beginning, uh, normal instructions on how to stitch. Um, and then we have, some, then there's a band sampler. Right there. And those charts, that's four pages of charts, and they are um, in color. Okay, let me put something in front of this. This one is one that I want to stitch. Um, now, those two little girls, whenever I stitch two little girls, I always make one brunette and one blonde. And that was what I had originally thought I would do with this one. But that would really throw the symmetry off in a weird way, wouldn't it? But I really, really want to do that one. Um, that is called the Margaret Simcock. Um, and the verse says, There is a path that leads to truth. Some may go astray. Narrow but pleasant is the road, and wise men love the way. Um, then there's this one, the Hannah Richards Sampler. It's just a small one. What are you doing? Oh, and then there's this one. I really want to do this one too. I love a shepherd and a shepherdess. They kind of look like a shepherd and a shepherdess. Kind of a pinky and blue boy look. Um, the border, that striped border, is very unique. I really, really like that one. That one and the Margaret Simcock are the ones that I really want to do. The Mary Elizabeth Nicholson sampler. Um, it says, The crown or coronet was widely used in Tudor decoration and was also hugely popular after the restoration of the monarchy in 1660. Um, and it's a color. It's all charted for DMC. It's a color chart. Um, let's see. What's that? And the schoolroom samplers. The Polly Kirkwood sampler, I guess. It's not a good picture. I think that's what's on the front. Um, it looks a lot better on the front. Uh, that doesn't really appeal to me. Um, the Hester Biddleton sampler. It's a small one also. Um, the Susanna Meeks. This says this particular sampler is not a reproduction of an original, but it's rather made in the style. I didn't look to see if the other ones were actual reproductions or not. Um, 
And then there's, did I show you that one? There's a multiplication table. I don't see a picture of that, but it's it's a multiplication table. It's numbers. Um, and then there are some more modern ones. There are some celebration. So that's an engagement celebration. Sampler. Um, a wedding ring sampler. House and Barn sampler. This sampler is loosely based on the early 19th century House and Barn samplers of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Silver and Golden Wedding Anniversary samplers. So the really traditional looking ones were just in the front. Ooh, I like that frame. Shows them made into pillows. And it's got flora and fauna samplers. Ooh, I like this one. Oh, wait, I don't like this one. Sorry. Carnation sampler. The one I do like, it's not a traditional looking sampler. Um, but I do like birds. I like this one. And the verse on it is, the bird which soars on highest wing builds on the ground her lowly nest, and she that doth most sweetly sing sings in the shade when all things rest. Um, I don't know. It says the border for this sampler is based on a Dutch design dated 1843. really pretty. I'd like to do that one. Over one on 40 count. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. And then a celebration of childhood. A christening, a white work christening sampler. Twins birth sampler. <clears throat> I wanted twins. I don't know where I would have put them though. I was pretty much, I'm short waisted, so I was filled to capacity both times. And I was on fertility medication, so I was hoping for twins. Um, so, anyways, that's what's in here. Traditional samplers by Brenda Keys. And I think that that is all. Ooh, only 48 minutes. This is like my shortest video ever. Let me just make sure. Yep. Um, I mean, knitting, I've done a million pairs of socks. Um, I don't know how exciting that is to tell you. I'm still listening um, to Dr. Trollope. No, Dr. Trollope. Dr. Thorne. Um, by Trollope. Um, it's the third in the Barchester um, series. I'm still listening to it on Audible. Um, I, I had reread Emma along with Bella when she was reading Emma for school, and I uh, reread The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. I listened to it on Audible, a very good narrator, and, um, or narrator. Is it narrator or narrator? I have no idea. Um, that's a really, really odd book, um, as C.S. Lewis, Lewis free, freely says. It's a, it's a very unique book um, written from the perspective of the demons in hell um, as they try to uh, trick us. Um, I reread that for school. I started reading A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. Mark Twain annoys me. Sorry. I don't know. He annoys me. But don't tell my children that because I make them read Mark Twain. Um, the next book Bella's going to read for geography um, in January is going to be Innocence Abroad, which is um, a travel narrative that he wrote of Americans going through Europe and the Holy Land. 
Um, I think it's a little anti-Catholic, but oh well. Um, but anyways, Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court, Bella's completely offended that he's poking fun at the Middle, of it, the Middle Ages. This is a kid who loves, I, sh I should be embarrassed to say this, but loves Monty Python and the parts we've showed her of, you know, like the Holy Grail. So it's okay for, her, for Monty Python to make fun of the Middle Ages, but it's not okay. And we keep pointing that out to her. If Monty Python were, were, were acting this book out, you would be laughing hysterically. Um, I started reading that with her, but I just couldn't keep up. Um, um, and I think that's everything. I think that's everything. So thank you so much for um, coming back and keeping me in your subscription <laughs> queue, even though it's been a very long time. They must be after the cat. They don't think she's allowed down here. Um, but thank you um, for coming back. Thank you if you're giving me um, a first try. Um, I, I start a lot of projects. I don't always finish them. Um, but and I want to thank you for your inspiration that I get from following all of you on Instagram. Um, for those of you that make podcasts, thank you for the inspiration that you share. Um, thank you for the encouragement that you give me on Instagram and um, on your, your comments on YouTube. Thank you to those of you who have asked me <laughs> if I was ever going to podcast again. Um, my husband kept asking me if I was ever going to podcast again. He said, I bought you. I bought you all that stuff, the microphone and everything. Are you not going to use it anymore? Um, it's just, I was making all those tacos and brownies. And teenagers, I mean, they just want food all the time. I mean, they come over here to play a game, a game of Pictionary. It's like a pan of brownies, tacos, a couple bags of popcorn, a couple bags of chips, dip. I mean, they're just bottomless pits. And then they're still going through the pantry. You know, I, I, can we make macaroni and cheese? I don't know. So anyways, um, thank you for watching, and I hope to be back in December, and um, my mom decorates her house um, for Christmas at Thanksgiving. Um, it's not on the scale of um, Priscilla, but I may take some pictures um, and prove to you that she really do, can't tell the difference between Uncle Sam's and Santa Claus's. Um, I hope, I'm gonna say it now to make it happen. I really hope, I took a short, maybe 15 minute video tour in her house, um, the 4th of July, I think, or sometime in the summer, um, to show you that she keeps the Santa Clauses out all year long, right on the shelves with the Uncle Sam's. Um, and to show you some other cross stitch things that are throughout her house. So I, Jerry, I want to tack it on right here at the end. Um, but thank you, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.